Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a little hippopotamus. All right, so I've got my earthenware clay here, just a lump of clay. I always roll it around in my palms just to round in and get rid of any of those bumpy edges. When you first take a lump of clay, it always comes out with creases and uneven edges. Now I've got this nice rounded piece and I can kind of pat it in the shape that I want it to be because I want to shape the abdomen of this hippo. A nice roly-poly one. So I'm just manipulating and patting it into an oval egg shape. And I could do this too to make it like that. So it's pretty ovalish. And then the cool thing about hippos is that you don't need it to be 100% clean because they are full of wrinkles. So I just have a popsicle stick, but you could use the end of a needle tool to put some lines in it to make it nice and wrinkly. There we go. So this is just his tummy so far. Now, hippos have huge heads. In comparison to the size of their body, it's crazy how big their heads are. So I'm taking kind of a large portion. So if I were making a puppy, I certainly wouldn't take this much clay if the body of the puppy was that small. But a hippo's head is much larger in comparison to the body than most other animals. So again, I should roll it around to get rid of the bumps, but then manipulate it into, I want to say kind of a rectangular shape. Their snout is ginormous. So I'm using the side of my thumb to in, um, kind of imprint here and then make the snout nice and big and then it'll be a little narrower up here where I've got um, where the eyes will be. Now everything that I just did was really gentle. I wasn't pressing excessively. It's all with a gentleness. If you're too rough with the clay you end up pinching it flat and that is not productive at all. Okay so everything I did was quite gentle and just repeated short motions to get it to eventually take the shape that I want it to have. So now I'm going to create the little eye sockets. It's really easy to just use a pencil to indent the point and make little even eye sockets. And now with eye sockets that small, I'm going to just take a super tiny amount of clay in my fingernail, but then roll it back and forth to make the little tiny eyeballs. Oh, that's stuck in my fingernail. There we go. And they don't look even, so I'm going to do a third. And I'm going to take the two that look the most even. And I'm going to use my needle tool to put a tiny bit of water inside each eye socket. And then use that needle tool to poke an eye. And pluck it in. Poke an eye and pluck it in. So now my hippo has its eyes. And then the nostrils down in front, I admit this is kind of cartoony, but I like it. I'm going to use the pencil tip to make those nostrils, okay? Now this is a nice straight line. So rather than drawing my smile on, I'm going to take my tool and line it up horizontally with the clay and use the length of my needle to create this very even mouth on my hippo. Okay, so yeah, he's looking like a hippo already. I'm just gonna rest you there right now while I make the ears. Take a super tiny pinch of clay, not as tiny as the eyes, but almost. Maybe a little bit more, roll it around, smooth it all out, flatten it a little bit. And again, same amount of clay, roll it around, back and forth, flatten it a little bit. And those will make the ears. Now, I'm going to take my head very gently, scratch them at the back of the head. Stay there. That will not be its permanent placement, trust me. Scratch and wet the back of the ear. Scratch and wet the back of the other ear. 
gently, gently apply it. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. So now he's looking pretty good so far. Scratch and wet this on. And the back of the head. Okay. Gently apply it. I'm using a little bit of pressure. Once I see the water oozing out of my seam, then I know that I've applied enough pressure. And I'll use the pencil to kind of erase and get rid of all that extra water. There we go. We can even tilt his head a little bit just to give him a little bit more expression. Okay, so now the legs. So Hippo's legs, it's kind of ridiculous how small they are for the size of their, aunt, their body. So I'm gonna take and roll these little carrot shapes rolling it back and forth, kind of evening out uh, the, the wrinkles and creases in the clay. Bend forward the foot. Use the needle tool to define some toes. Pat it a little bit more. Roll it around, get rid of the unevenness, and now go back and forth, tapering it into that carrot shape again. Cut my toes. Bend it forward, that separates them a little bit. Okay, so those are kind of big. So those are gonna be the hind legs. And we'll make smaller ones for the front, I think. Roll it around and then go back and forth. Roll it around, go back and forth. Yep, they're the same size. So I'm going to cut my toes, separate them. But when I push against it, it kind of separates the toes. There we go. Okay, so I've got four legs and feet. I'm going to pick them up, scratch and wet where they all go. Now that I have him in my hand and realize how heavy he is, I realize I'm going to need to hollow him out. And that's not a big deal. I can do that at the end. I'll do that really carefully so I don't disrupt his shape at all. See how he's coming together? He, she, not sure yet. And scratch and wet. that. Okay. Let's get some nice thighs here. I'm going to smooth that in so we don't leave it looking like he's been manufactured. We want the limbs to look like they're growing out. Smoothing that in. There we go. I love looking at and seeing that curve of the thigh come out. That looks more natural too. And then I erased some of my wrinkles. So now I'm gonna put some of those wrinkles back on and give them some fun little wrinkly ankles, some knees. There we go. And the same back here. Okay, so I talked about hollowing him out, so I better do that. I'm just going to uh, take a tool up inside there gently, wiggle it around in there without disrupting his shape any. I'm not pinching in with my hand here because if I pinched in, that would warp the shape and kind of ruin it. So now I've opened him up quite generously to keep him from blowing up in my kiln. Now I'm going to just kind of smooth that almost shut. Not all the way shut, but almost shut. And I can add some more wrinkles if I need to. And all he needs is a tiny, tiny tail. Scratch and wet that on. 
and press it and smooth the top of the tail. Maybe it's not that tiny. Maybe it should be a little bigger. And if I remember correctly, I think they're kind of hairy at the bottom. I could be wrong. You'll have to look it up. All right. Here we go. There he is. Okay. There's a happy hippo. Thanks for watching.